actually, let's see. Uh, yep, apparently sugar zero grams. Well, take a look at that. Ah, I see. You have chosen to drink air today. Granted, Tic Tacs are technically able to say the same thing because the Tic Tac ingredients are listed uh, per Tic Tac. <laughs> And so they can say zero sugar, despite the fact that each one of them has less than a gram of sugar. A.K.A. they still have sugar. Mm-hmm. Medical facts. Or not medical, uh, nutritional facts. Anyway, <laughs> we're doing some more RPG horror stories. These ones written by the Jiggle King one. Ah, I see. The original Jiggle King. <sighs> Either that or the second one. You know, you don't have to put your head in my lap, dude. I always thought that worked retroactively. What do you mean? So, one of my friends is actually, like, his full name is the same as his father, and their father shares the same name, so he's the third, right? Yeah, he'd be the third. So, if he's Jiggle King 1, wouldn't he be the first? Well, like... what I'm saying is that the Jiggle King was taken. Oh. <laughs> I was talking about actual nomenclature, or not nomenclature, <laughs> that's something else, but actual names, yeah. Okay. I am I am really out of it today, that's all I gotta say, my head hurts. I'm in like a constant state of yawning. <laughs> <laughs> it's not gonna be fun for me today. Yeah, uh, but our first story is three campaigns cancelled in four sessions, problematic person removed. Part one of three. Number 15. <laughs> Number 15. We're at 10 campaigns now, and each one has been cancelled. I literally had someone, like, reference that at work, and it was the weirdest thing. <laughs> Nothing's fun when a fast food em employee implies that someone's been stepping in food. It's like, I, I can't remember, because they were talking about, like, the lettuce, and... It, like, suddenly that happened. It was like, God damn it. Now I've got to start doing the voice. <laughs> oh, thought that died in 2019. Hell, probably even 2018, but here we are. An anonymous poster on 4chan posted the following picture with the mess, uh, with the caption. This is the lettuce that goes in your Burger King burger. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> first time poster posting on Noble. Uh, Mobile, so I do apologies. I do apologies. Uh, don't worry, apologies accepted. Die fuck bees, not tragedies. <laughs> Why not? Bees are pretty hot. I said I do fuck bees. I do fuck bees, I see. I don't fuck tragedies. Wait, are you fucking that bee behind the college? Because if you are, that cheating bitch. <laughs> How dare you she? You still haven't listened to that version of the song yet, have you? No, I've been very busy being... tired. <sighs> Ow. Everything hurts right now. Mostly my head. Is your line. First... Uh, right. <laughs> We're reading! Yes! <laughs> a bit of a setup before we start, so this will be long, so please bear that with me. This will be a multi-part thing, as this story has many moving parts. And many layers, like an onion. Like an ogre. Yeah. At the beginning of this year, I had been without a group for nearly two years. Jesus! Uh, okay, yeah, that's not just me, right? Yeah. I've been without a group for nearly two years without a group, as the previous one fell apart in a bad way. If I ask, I may make a second post about this. Oh, I was referring to the two years thing. Okay, yeah. Again, it's not like mobile has spelled, that has like a grammar check thing. Just spelling. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> So instead of being upset, I posted on Facebook looking for groups in the area, and to my absolute delight, within an hour, had six replies. <laughs> and I chose the wrong one. And we had set up a game for that weekend. 
weekend rolls around and we get to know each other personally and get started making characters in a world the DM had previously run in and was completely homebrewed. Let's introduce our players and DM. Ron, a problematic problematic person, but boy, did it take a while for us to notice. Hmm. He was an excellent storyteller. Gary, DM's friend, playing a sorcerer who was the son of his previous character in the world, allowing him to be our guide in this world. Mark, first time player, but super excited. Create a samurai style fighter. Ricky, an old acquaintance of mine that created a really sexual minded bard. Me. Ranger. And not the current one. I still love the stuff done for like the new version, uh, like the uh, optional uh, like uh, class fe- uh, class features. Yeah. Just because of the whole thing of multi-use hunter's mark. <laughs> like that is terrible, and I love it. Like a good kind of terrible, because it does bonus damage. I'd give you a better response, but my hurts really bad right now. <laughs> At the outset, we all roll. Uh, we are told we all roll stats together. It can use any wizard's books and unearthed arcana we wanted. Circle of spores, druid. <laughs> <laughs> I Ricky, can be a fungus zombie. Ricky and my character are related, and we all spend a few hours making our characters with the DM. Ah, yes, we are spore fungi brothers. I do find it kind of interesting how, like, in, like, any of the campaigns we've done, we all trust each other enough not to, like, fake what we get for stats. <laughs> but yeah, go ahead, roll at home, I trust you. <laughs> it's just usually my rolls are so bad that I get a pity roll. <laughs> yeah. Or, like, in my case, I get, like, one really great roll, and then everything else is either average or terrible. Mm-hmm. Like, well, this is going to be interesting at the very least. <laughs> uh, yeah. Our first session starts with us waking up in a wasteland surrounded by bar- bodies and all dressed in the same uniform. <laughs> We quickly take shelter in an abandoned inn. While we look for supplies, Gary finds a sink filled with strange glowing liquid. He touches it and is knocked out cold. Well. As none of us know each other except Gary, Ricky, uh, except Gary, Ricky and I move his lifeless body out of the way and keep looking for supplies. We notice a strange person standing outside. My char- character, being protect, being a the protective kind of ranger, heads out to investigate, and is one shot KO'd without warning. <laughs> we have no armor or items at the moment. Gary jumps up and tells us we have to leave. <laughs> You're now awake. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. They grab my body and drag me off into the forest, and Ricky seriously starts making sexual jokes about my character. His character's sister, and yes, this happens constantly. <laughs> oh dear god! We eventually find our way to a military camp and are given equipment to the next to get us to the next town. We all uh, we head off and encounter bandits, and all roll terribly. Three of our horses are dead. <laughs> This just sounds like a bad luck campaign. Mark and I are on one HP. Ricky is down to one spell slot and injured. Gary is perfectly fine and has all his spell slots. But, like, some of it is also stuff that, like, just seems like a bad idea. Like, I've had it to where, like... Yeah, Yeah, I've had it to where, like, combat will start with the creature, like, doing a first move, and then initiative happens. But that's not against people who aren't armored. And have nothing on them. It's just a whole thing of... It's now charging at you. (laughs) Uh Uh-oh. Hold on, I gotta... Let's see, as none of us know each other. Gary says... Gary says we should track down the bandit base. We all agree, but Mark and I say we should rest up first. Gary refuses to listen, just walks off to do it solo. 
Oh, God. Sounds like someone we know. I'm having flashbacks. Mark and I sit down to have short rest, and Ricky uses his last spell slot to heal himself and then spent the short rest telling us we shouldn't be resting. <laughs> Don't rest. <laughs> During this time, Gary gets caught and attacked by the bandits and is knocked out. He never even has to make death saves? I... I'm sorry. <laughs> We eventually arrive. Mark and I move to get into ambush position with bow and arrow. Ricky walks up to try to persuade the bands to give us Gary back. They draw their blades, so I attack first to try to save Ricky. We are told there were more bandits we didn't see. We are overwhelmed and are all down, so Gary uses his god point, an ability none of us knew about, but apparently we all had one, but we're never told. I'm sorry. So Gary just jumps up and basically Kamehameha as the bandits killing them all and somehow stabilizing all of us. I... I... God point d and &D. Well, it said that it was an entirely homebrewed world. Ah. So I'm guessing that's part of it, but there's a lot of red flags right there in that one paragraph. Uh, yeah. The two that stick out to me first are, one, no perception check to see whether or not they notice the thing. All right. The other is not telling them about a mechanic you implemented. The only person that knew was the person that played before with this person. Mm-hmm. We continued our journey to town. Mark and I don't trust Gary because we didn't see him as uh, as he was bound inside a wagon when we arrived. And when we woke, awoke from being unconscious in a burned down forest, he claimed he saved us all and we all owe him. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't trust that either. Things are moving really fast this session, too. Like these people get like these people are getting like knocked out and teleported across the map. Yeah, like, maybe it's just the fact that things have been moving slowly in all the sessions we've done. <laughs> like, both oh, the ones run by me and Tom. But, yeah, this seems like it's moving too fast. Yeah. Arriving at the town, we take a ship to the capital. Ricky tries to persuade the captain to give us free passage, but in his roleplay, he's immensely condescending and rude. But he says he rolled a 24 persuasion. We should get the boat free. The DM now tells us that role-playing is what matters, not the dice essentially dice essentially stripping our bard of all of his stats. I mean, if he's being condescending and rude, it be intimidation? <laughs> yeah, not persuasion. Like, this is like, I'm seeing two big problems here, both with the DM and the player. <laughs> yeah. Because one, if you are going to be trying to convince people of something... Probably shouldn't have it be that your character is just outright being a dick to people. Yeah, like, if someone was being a dick and they're trying to persuade someone, I'd probably I'd tell make the DC pass like 30. I'd tell him to roll for intimidation instead of persuasion. Persuasion. Yeah. yeah. All right. As such, the captain turns us away, but immediately a second person says we can get on their boat free as long as they can get us to listen to a job proposition. It is an attractive woman. Gary and Ricky both start flirting with her and had and almost cost us the job because they demanded 50,000 gold each. We are level two. I'm... I'm sorry, what? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with these people? Gary, please stop. Also stop that, Ricky, please. <laughs> I attempted to talk to the woman, and she gives us the job at the price I ask for. A boat and a crew. No gold, as I hate cities and want to use the boat for each of us to reach our goals. Odd situation is both Ricky and Gary had 18 charisma, and I had six. <laughs> But I became the talker for the party since their characters were so pervy and rude. <laughs> <laughs> the 
This sounds like Sazerac being the mom because they have to deal with Ruru and Kresnik. <laughs> Which is weird, because you'd think Sazerac would be the pervy one, considering he's an incubus bard prostitute. <laughs> but at the same time, playing him, I decided to go more of a Freddie Mercury or... Uh, uh, oh god, I forgot his name. Uh, David Bowie kind of route. Like, yeah, he's sexual, but he's not just nothing but dick jokes. Ah, <laughs> uh, I want to make like a melee class noble. That's just a hoity-toity asshole. But because they're like, you know, a noble, I want to give them super low con just to see how quickly I can kill them. <laughs> Honestly, I just find it funny how little gold the noble background actually gives you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, the noble. So you're rich, right? Well, yes, but no. <laughs> you're probably like a lesser noble or something. Either that or I guess your parents cut you off. I mean, you are out adventuring, not, you know, helping with the family. Yeah. This caused huge problems as they wanted money and nothing else. So, Ruru... Yes, but at least Ruru has Sazerac to keep her somewhat in line. <laughs> the party... She doesn't hide it from the party. The, so the party's just like, Oh, I think our thief wants to steal. Let's not let her do that. Yeah. <laughs> and she's smart enough not to go behind people's backs. Like, <laughs> because Sazerac. she was caught, like, by the guard. Yeah. She's already going to be on, like, a shunned silence from stealing from anyone else because she knows the guards know her face now. Yeah, then like with the whole thing of like, I see the bag of gold, I want to steal it. Not now. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, no. Like, I think at this point, Sazerac's more just tr teaching her alternate ways to get money. <laughs> Pretty much. Arriving in the capital, we get to work and the session ends. <laughs> uh, no, oh, yeah. I missed the next session, but not during that time. Uh, but during that time, they did some detective work around town and make uh, make some good money and spend all of it immediately. We have a chat group where we do between session role play. My character learns about what they did and calls them children for spending all the money. Ricky literally says he will give me fifty gold gold to do sexual deeds with him, his sister. So my ranger left the party and I made a new character. Only Mark actually tried to keep me in the party. Ricky, what the fuck? <laughs> Oy, behind the scenes, the DM and I are arguing because I used the revised ranger and he didn't want me to use it and led to more and more problems to the point to where I uh to the point I was told which subclass to take. Okay. What? Wait, what? Oh, he used the revised ranger. I'm guessing the original revised ranger, which was an unearthed arcana thing. They ah. were told any unearthed arcana you want. But not the revised ranger. And the arguing got to such a point that the DM told him which subclass to take. So I make a warlock next. DM agrees, and at this session tells me he doesn't allow warlocks, druids, pal paladinos. <laughs> <laughs> Or clerics in this world, as there are no gods and wizards don't exist because no one would teach anyone else magic. Inform people beforehand! <laughs> Granted, I'm in a situation where I'm technically allowing clerics for dead gods in the, pa in the Planeswalkers thing. Because, uh... The Jess that does, uh... Monster of the Week. Yeah, Monster of the Week with us is considering a Cleric of Bantu who is dead. <laughs> um, there might be some way to spin that. Yeah, so, yeah. Like, like, maybe as, like, a dying breath, they imbued some of their followers with, like, a part well, of his being worth for, like, magic and stuff. It is shown that, like, when the different gods died, like, different things happened. So, Bantu, when she died... Could still have had her power left in there, and I'd probably just have it to where, like, the, uh... She could still a... cast magic, but, like, Divine Request would be hard. Divine Request would probably be more of a thing of coming from within rather than from without. Yeah. 
So it'd be more like the energy within themselves actually caused it to happen. Yeah, so they're making a cleric, though? Yeah. And I want uh, to Well, make a, a potential cleric. making, potentially making a cleric. The other thing was a possibility of one of the Aetherborn from Kaladesh, but she didn't like the idea of having a character that would have either such a short lifespan or would have to vampirize people. Uh, if she's doing a cleric, I might try Paladin. My smite slots? You're what? <laughs> yeah, so instead of just being a zealous healer, I can punch people and be a zealot. Oh, God. Uh, so I hate like... fish. You realize you're standing on top of an ocean, technically, right? I'm what? <laughs> <laughs> Take me off this plane this instant! <laughs> Again, Ravnica is going to be really fun, and not just because of the fact that it's the only only plane I know of, at the very least, where indoor plumbing's a thing. <laughs> yeah, my 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 the plane that I was trying to create is currently in the um, you know, age of exploration. If anything, he doesn't he's he's more worried about fighting off scurvy. Yeah, I mean, it has kind of the whole issue of flooding. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's currently flooding. very flooded. Yes. <laughs> All right. I say, okay, I will make another character after this session. Gary misses this session, and we are TPK'd, and so we had to make new characters except Gary. At this point, my fiancé joins, and Mark has to leave due to some personal issues. Uh, edit reposted due to random live chat incident. Second edit changed letters to names due to complaints. Yeah, that is a thing that is kind of annoying when some people do that, because I can't keep that straight as much, and that would probably explain the space in Gary earlier. Anyway, oh. part two. Yeah. TLDR first part. Game, Game starts? Okay. Oh, fu- uh, sh- uh, should I go? <laughs> I'll read the TLDR. Game starts with problems abound. A top and new rule... A, uh, a top and rule changes... Or, uh, it, oh, wait. A top and rule change... Rule... Fucking hell. With problems abound, a top, and rules are changed on the fly. After my fiancé joins, our new party is... Ruby, an elven ranger. My fiancé. Ricky, half-orc barbarian. Gary, sorcerer. Ron, the DM. Me, human monk. Not a tranquil person, more MMA-style fighter. Has a large black tattoo. I, that just our... reminds me of my lizard man monk idea. It's like, not a tranquil person. Just beating the shit out of people, really. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I get my calm. By showing everyone my might! <laughs> All I we... told you about that one is it was the lizard man, uh, the lizard folk monk who exclusively bites people. Because oh. it's an unarmed strike. <laughs> <laughs> like, I have a joke at one point for their backstory of the other lizard folk in the tribe aren't entirely sure if he's actually one of them or just a particularly uh, a particularly smart dinosaur they happen to adopt. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, even for a lizard man, he's fucking... Like, he's half feral. <laughs> we slowly get our party together and head to a new area to continue investigation. We find out we are hunting down a secret organization and I discover the tattoo I have is mystical. <sighs> Part dynamic is, is is all messed up as Gary is in the session ha- he missed somehow received over six thousand gold. I'm spending- sorry, what? We kept spending and it never ran out, but we know it's over six thousand. As such, he says he is our boss and paying us. We all shrug and reject him, but he continues to act that way. <laughs> uh. Gary. <laughs> Ricky is an extremely simple barbarian that is constantly eating meat out of the pouch. Once, uh, uh, one session I followed him when he tried to sneak away and discovered he's a serial killer that takes his victims' tongues and feeds them to the party. What? (laughs) Ruby and my character actually do detective work and naturally become close, so we run it past the party, but our character's becoming a couple. At least it's a whole thing of there is character development in there to cause it. The other option is to have it to where the characters' backstories are entwined to where they were just a couple from the start. Yeah, but then you get but then you can get drama like, you know, Ruru and Kresnik. 
<laughs> Drama, I met Trainwreck. Oh, uh, just wait till Sazerac decides to ask Kresnik why. <laughs> like, why, Ruru? <laughs> because... He's already kind of explained why, though. Yes, but he hasn't explained in character. Out of character, we know. In uh, character, we don't. He's mentioned it, I think, to Ruru offhand. He's mentioned like, it to Ruru? Like, wait, do like, I know Wait, you? wait, wait, yeah. But <laughs> that's as far as we've got in character. Mm-hmm. So... <laughs> I'm just going to tell you, Sazerac, as soon as he finds out, is just going to be like, Nope! (laughs) (laughs) Dear God, everyone's insane. (laughs) (laughs) Uh. I swear, like, like, part of me is just a whole thing of, I, like, part of me is just a whole thing of, like, okay, I don't want Sazerac to just go, I I don't want to, like, go Fuck this, I'm out. But I feel like at some point, Sazerac's going to hit that point. <laughs> He's just going to be like, all right, I'm leaving this party. He's and like, why do I deal with these people? <laughs> <laughs> and then he's going to have to make a new character. <laughs> but at the same time, we're already on the way back to like the starting point. So it might be ending soon. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, so it's like, it might be too late for that. <laughs> But it's still one of those things of, like, just... It's like Sazerac has started to get to that point of, like, why do I deal with all of you? Because you love us like a Miami. <laughs> anyway. Uh, party agrees, but now Ricky, out of game, starts making horribly sexual jokes about Ruby. Gary starts making moves on Ruby in-game, and she turns him down. Hey, this character's dating this other character. Can I seduce? Uh, I... Again, nothing wrong with the poly relationship, just don't try to force that shit. We find out my tattoo comes from a strange cult, and we go to investigate it. Now, I never care... <laughs> my character never wore a shirt, so his tattoo was always on display. During our investigation, we are attacked by two people. We are easily... Def- I get told my hand breaks because I rolled two crit hits against someone with armor. What? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out if that means that they critically failed or critically succeeded. It's a critical fail that makes sense. It'd be kind of a funny thing, like if you roll like the D100 and got a really small roll. Yeah, yeah. It's but, a good uh, thing that I've never managed to get under a 20 with the D100. Mm-hmm. No, lucky for you guys, anyway. Yeah. Less lucky for the monsters. Yeah. Or wait, no, I did. Because that's what caused... That's what caused Ricky to accidentally hit Bor- Bjorn with a greatsword. <laughs> yeah. As most of our party is down, I decide to use my god point to try to save us. I don't get a huge martial arts display or any mystic force. Nope, the guys we are fighting notice my tattoo. The constantly visible tattoo. Ow. <laughs> you okay? Yeah. Just tried to shove my palm through my forehead. Just pet a dog and said, They're not sitting next to me. They're both laying on the ground, sleeping. They didn't wake up from you palming your head? No. (laughs) That sounds like my dog. They only care whenever they want attention. (laughs) They take us to their leader who invites us to join the cult. At this point, while we make our decision, a new guy joins us. A rogue swashbuckler, and here starts the shit. Oh, fuck. No. I I lost my place. Uh, At the end. Well, no, like, I somehow managed to scroll up to the very top by just touching my screen. (laughs) I'm on my phone right now, just lying in bed, because I don't want to sit down. I got you. 
At the session, at the end of the session, Gary agrees to join the cult, and I agree to follow to find out more about my tattoo. So the party splits. Oof! Split party. Weirdly enough, the thing that I've realized is that splitting the party is less a safety measure for the party and more just to uh, to save the DM. <laughs> Because when you split the party, it makes things harder for the DM. Which is yeah. also kind of a shame in Monster of the Week, because splitting the party is also what makes it easier to actually introduce a monster. Yeah. Problem with splitting the party is, is that you have players just sitting around doing nothing. That too, but it's also a whole thing of, like, the DM has to keep track of more things. Mm-hmm. Ah. Uh. Let's see. Uh, we get a little side thing we do between sessions and land up teleporting to the uh, teleporting to the party who left us behind previously with an artifact we found for the cult. Now between sessions, the rogue threw a massive tantrum about the DM not noticing him and all the rules that are different, such as Nat ones counting even if you have advantage. I'm sorry. Net twenties count uh, count even if you have disadvantage. My monk not being allowed to do any kind of free movement around the battlefield, such as leaping off small ledges for an attack. <laughs> uh, oh god! And if you have multiple attacks, if you miss one, you lose the rest. <laughs> Nani. Nani, nani, the fuck? <laughs> this dude plays dumb D and D. This is like some like atom uh, brain shit. Like this is a galaxy brain. This is just one atom brain. It's like I have some questionable rules. I'll admit it. Dear God. <laughs> or at least potentially questionable. There is the whole thing of like maybe I made the slope of that lake a bit too a lake bed a bit too steep. Eh. The very least Anthony had a problem with it. <laughs> I wasn't ready for it to go down that deep too. That was kind of sudden for yeah. me. That was but like was all right. Time, you... That was my first ever water based combat in D and D. I've never done that before. Same. Because one of you decided, let's fight the fish. <laughs> I want to get them up to the edge of the water, but, you know. They kind of jumped and down onto the land and nibbled my feet. A few of them did get up to the edge of the water. Other ones decided, yeah, nah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, you never went out into the water enough to do that. You just got hit with a very unfortunate at 20. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the fish got a nat 20 on me? Yes. Oh, okay, that makes a bit more sense. The fucker was just upon me. He, yeah. he probably saw me, like, on the water, and before I even made a toot, he was like, yeet! <laughs> yeah, that was the whole thing, is it bum-rushed you and also got a nat 20. So it was like, oh. Because it's not like it had advantage or anything. Yeah. It was just like, ooh, food! <laughs> he nippled my toes. Mine, 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 mine! <laughs> Is it my land? Yes. Um, on my side? Yep. I was getting irritated as I was researching why religion disappeared in-game. Also, every encounter the creatures were resistant to non-magical attacks, so I was permanently doing half damage. I... So you hmm. throw out all the mages, and then make everything immune to Resist physical? Make everything resistant to physical damage. That... Non-magical physical. That's incredibly convoluted. That is aggravating. Mm-hmm. That's... Ugh. That bugs me. The next session rolls around... Uh, the next session rolls around. Literally nothing happened as the rogue was late, and when he arrived, he and Ricky sat and discussed another game very loudly and never paid attention, as, so the DM scrapped the entire campaign. Wow. He eventually asked if someone else could run, and he would pick up in a few sessions. I offered to run a full campaign. He said no. <laughs> Dick. My fiancé offered to run a short game in a homebrew world with very low magic. This dude's just magically racist. 
Yeah, if you're gonna be like that, just do a Kaladesh game. Maybe he doesn't know what a Kaladesh is. It's one of the planes. Yeah, maybe he's not a, a nerd who likes Magic the Gathering. <laughs> maybe he's just... He's not a nerd. He doesn't look at this other thing made by the same company. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey, I play D and D, and I don't even know what a plain Zawaker is. I mean, we have explained it to you multiple times. <laughs> yeah, but here's the thing: what if he doesn't have friends to explain it to him? Well, that just makes it seem like you have less of an excuse. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my point. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that maybe he doesn't know. Th maybe he doesn't know what Magic the Gathering is or cares about it. He's here for tabletop games, not card games. Well, it's not like we're actually going to be doing card games with tabletop games. Well, yeah, but, like, also, this dude's clearly a home brewer. Yeah. I mean, the main thing you just have to know is how planeswalkers themselves work, and that has been explained a few times. Yes, I get it. I'm just, yeah. I was just trying to make a point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jesus yeah. Christ, trying to take everything I say literally like a goddamn <laughs> lawyer. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I mean... All I'm going to say is that if I accidentally put something too powerful, you better just hope that your charisma saving throws are, what are good. <laughs> nah, I hope my feet can carry me the fuck away from it. Well, if you succeed a charisma saving throw against the damage that would have dropped you below zero, instead of dying, instead of, like, getting knocked unconscious, you just end up planeswalking away. <laughs> ah. Yeah. I'm going to make it to where I have the worst charisma ever. <laughs> Just to make it hard for myself. <laughs> That's like why with the Planeswalker NPCs I created, I gave them proficiency in charisma saving throws. Ah. <laughs> so that there was a higher chance of them managing to escape. <laughs> Wait, do paladins get charisma saving throws? Uh, that is an excellent... Question. I have the player's handbook right in front of me, on my desk. Pop this bad boy open. Uh, that's the sorcerer, so it would be in front of this. That's the rogue. Still further. Ranger. Paladin. Uh, let's look. Saving throws. Wisdom and charisma. Hey! I can at least get like a negative one or two charisma then. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be at least be even. Yep. And so long as it's not a situation where, like, you end up having, uh, like, more than 20 damage be what knocks you down to zero. Yeah. <laughs> you can escape. Uh, let's see. Uh, we did a session zero in one other session Ronk complained, Ruby's game has no magic and his character could do nothing cool and was never noticed. This was after she spent the entire second session letting him roleplay and find small magical items because he already complained before. Huh. Bitch! <laughs> Bitch! <laughs> Bitch! How dare you! <laughs> Alright, um... So? So, so Ron starts his campaign again. I will post uh, part three shortly. Edit, change the names about the things, yada, yada. All right, so part, last part. Yep, last part of this particular thing. Yeah. Uh, TLDR, our campaign starts to unravel. DM throws a tantrum and camp cancels campaign temporarily, then tells my fiance, fiance to cancel her campaign so we can continue his. Also, I'd like to point out that he was upset that he couldn't use magic when he made a campaign in which he outlawed magic. Yeah. Weird. Um, Warning. Sexual assault. Oh, lovely. So we start where we left off, investigating the secret organization and slowly taking down the heads of the organization. Arpati, Ruby, Elven Ranger, my fiance, Gary, Human Shadow Sorcerer, what? Matt, Gnome Artificer, mm -hmm. Sam, Halfling Bard, Ron, DM, me, Human Monkaroonie. Our first lead we tracked down, uh, our first lead we tracked down to my home where it's revealed how my character became a monk. 
I will type it quickly in brackets so people so people so people can skip if they want. Raised in the sec raised as a second son in a noble warrior's family, was never treated well, so he rebelled by hanging out with peasantry and doing petty theft. He got caught in a prison for years as a child before being shipped off to the pr after praying for anything to save him. This is the reason he is trying to find religion. That's not actually a bad backstory. Where have all the gods gone? <laughs> have they abandoned this plane? Where are my gods, Summer? <laughs> anyway, we find uh, we find the head to be the matriarch of one of the noble families, and we kill her, halting a world war between elves, dwarves, and humans. Nice. Matt joins yep. us at this point, being chased by strange shadow dogs. We help him, and he agrees to join us as we track down and head to a huge farming community. Finding her, and through some excellent stealth, we discover she's being blackmailed, and on exchange for leads, on the other heads, we'll assist, uh, we will assist her. We find out the location of three heads. One, uh, one the leader of a bank. One, a black market dealer on the cap on the capital. One, the king of the country. We go to the bank to pick up our new bard. Ah, yes, the bard bank, my favorite. We are buying a bard. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> is that like buying a vowel? I just realized that we left out. A ch we left out a paragraph. <laughs> Whoops. It was right after the backstory. Uh, we spend time with a childhood friend of mine, and the DM tries to flirt with my character, constantly making my character uncomfortable as he doesn't flirt, and he and Ruby have become close just by spending time together. He has feelings for her and doesn't understand them. He's 18 and has been monks, monks or imprisoned since 10. So puberty was never addressed for him. <laughs> Oof. There we go. At this point, things are flowing well. Gary has stepped back, and I have taken the lead. Being a DM, I allow everyone to shine, so they chose me. Uh, we do a full Ocean Eleven-like heist using the Sam uh, using the Sam's disguise kit. I am made to look like a noble. Matt followed us on an invisible bar uh, on an invisible barrel. Ruby is my secretary. Gary and Sam use magic to hover outside the window, invisible, until we let them in. Anyways, it goes off flawlessly, and we kill the guy and hide his body in a secret room. So off to capital, we start to head. During this time, our airship is shot down, and through amazing dice rolls, I activate an artifact we stole for the cult and teleport the party out of harm's way to the top of a mountain. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having flashbacks. <laughs> <laughs> We make our way through the mountain, where we discover ancient dwarven ruins. Gary was in a bad mood, so we decided to grave rob a scepter. I took an item also, and we had to escape the mountain filled with traps Indiana Jones. We found out the scepter is a magical item. Whoa, a magical scepter? Nice. At this point, Gary has all the party gold and four magic items. The rest of us have nothing. Rip. Also, the party found out my character is a virgin. Important for later. I, I, mm. Mm. That's concerning. Mm. We get to a nearby town that is really bizarre. On a dreamlike state and saying this is the town of the ghosts in, uh, instantly interesting me. We meet the leader of the town and I kid you not, she used permanent charm magic to charm everyone in the party except Ruby. Oh boy. She then proceeds to. I don't really want to say that word. Force herself. Yeah. Onto. Uh, she, uh, grape. My <coughs> character willingly, as Ton puts it. Ruby gets angry about this next, because that should never year. happen in a game, and I am. I And I never got a save. I agree with her, but try to stay calm. Yeah, that's fucked. Gary got angry because he wanted to sleep. Gary! Gary? I will bitch slap you back into that chair. Mac breaks, Matt breaks out of the charm and saves me by dragging me out 
a stained glass window with a lasso while flying his magic barrel. Hell yeah! It was amazing. That does sound good. Slowly we gather. I, the... oh. I got you, boy. Yeehaw! <laughs> Just see a barrel flying in the wind. Yeah. Just man tied to it. <laughs> Slowly we gather the party and confront a creature that has been chasing us. A shadow demon that takes me, the party tank, to one HP with one hit. It's resistant to all damage types and has a huge AC. <sighs> Ruby uses her gold point to save us. This is accomplished by the tattoo of my arm becoming a dragon and eating the demon that's disappearing. So I lost my tattoo. Well. Huh. After the session, the DM tells me my character is way too strong. I deal the least damage and just tank. <laughs> We break the scepter in the next session and land and land up meeting a god. As a level up was approaching, I asked the DM if now that we personally know a god could could now that we personally knew a god, could I be a cleric? His answer, no. I need to pray to her more. <laughs> Fucking hell. What the fuck? <laughs> So back on the mainland, we go to a huge puzzle in the DM's world and spend an entire session trying to solve it. Ruby mocks my character and pretends to pray, understandable as she didn't believe it was a god. Because of this, I was not allowed to pray for the entire session because I didn't make a save. Wisdom saving, uh, a wisdom save, by the way. After a six-hour session, the DM finally says this puzzle does have a solution, but you're too low-level to solve it. Is that how puzzles work? I, 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 I don't. So we wasted an entire session and got zero clues to the puzzle. At the very least, if they were too low level, they should have gotten some clues. Yeah. Or at least something that would have... Something to make it worth their while. I would have made the door just, like, ridiculously hard to open. Like, you need to be stronger to enter here, here, here clearly. <laughs> Why is this door so heavy? Because shut up, that's why. It turns out that there's a Goliath on the part in the party. Stand aside. <laughs> Goliaths do count as one size category larger than they actually are for that sort of thing. Nice. <laughs> Which is why that Goliath Ranger is gonna be really fucking funny to play. <laughs> yeah. Stand aside. <laughs> Anyway, our next session arrives and we are in the capital. We track down the black market dealer, but decide to check out the king first. He is out in public. He's pretty hot. But we can't reach him in any way, shape, or form, and the DM tells us that exactly. <laughs> just say there are too many guards. Like, he has a lot of guards surrounding him, and, like, they're just kind of staring and glaring at anyone approaching him. <laughs> and, anyway, time the, and every him, time the character... That's a lot of fucking guards with glowing eyes. <laughs> That's a lot of angry-looking guards, and anytime you approach to try to yell for the king, they speak over you and tell you to shut up. <laughs> like, any time you get within a certain distance, their head just snaps towards you. <laughs> yep. Just give all the guards true sight. <laughs> <laughs> the town of true sight? No, just the guards. <laughs> uh. Just make it a... Like, fucking hellacious to deal with the guards. You can't sneak past them. Your only option is to kill them. So now we are all pissed to go to fight the black market guy. Before the fight, I am told I take off running using one of my key points to step of wind. Again, no save. Sam says he cast Otolok's spear, and when he sees this is to protect the party, but the guy attacks us, and he one-shots Gary, Ruby, and Matt with a spell. Oh. Well, Sam cast a dome around himself to protect himself now, and he said he was casting it, so he went through with it. I had to use a key point just to get back to the fight. Everyone fails a death save. Sam brings Gary back with healing word. Stand up! Okay. So stand up, so stand up, so stand up. <laughs> All right, I'll stand up. You stop making that dumb song. All right. Yes, that is a motherfucking JoJo reference. Do 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 do. Wait, no, that's that's Sans. Hold on. 
No, I was trying to go for the theme. One of them starts with that. That's my favorite Joe Star right there. Joseph Joe Star. The guy nearly one shots me with a spell. You know, the guy that's too overpowered. Yeah. My turn one, uh, my turn, I hit him a bit, but he doesn't seem phased. Sam leaves his bubble, try and stables Ruby, but fails and gets one shot the next round. Gary attacks the guy and does some damage. Ruby rolls a nat one and dies, but she is laughing at a joke Sam made when the DM tells her this. He gets angry and looks at Matt and says, you have a good god point, use it. Matt says, no, it's not fair, and fails his death save. <laughs> <laughs> no. How about no? Yeah. Dies. <laughs> Gary attacks, Sam fails a death save, Matt dies before I can do anything else, so I attack and kill the guy. The DM looks at me angrily and says, fine, next week you DM, since you guys aren't taking this seriously and don't even use your god points to stay alive, so obviously we all hate this campaign. I hate his campaign. Why is he so bitter? Because <laughs> he's trying to have it go a certain way and no one's doing anything to help with him. Would that the campaign to the players? He's trying to keep it the campaign for himself, though. I mean, he keeps one-shotting everyone. Like, he doesn't want to lose. That's, that's the whole thing. Is like, one of the things I, I learned relatively quickly with Monster of the Week is you adapt the campaign to the players. One of my favorite things about Monster of the Week is like, listen, you're here to make the players feel like badasses, not you. Yes. It's a joint effort, but at the end of the day, you were the DM is not the main character. Yeah. God is not the main character of this story. All of us say that's not fair to do what the dice determined, the dice determined that we were all enjoying the campaign. Except for the part where I got assaulted. Yeah. <laughs> no one enjoys that. Ever. Unless you get consent from the party to do that sort of thing. And even then, you gotta handle it tactfully. Yeah. And no, being mind-controlled or charmed does not count as consent. Nope. That is not willingness. Again, I'm playing an Incubus. I literally have the ability to charm someone by talking to them for a minute. That's not I'm consent. I'm not using that for that. Ever. You're using it to steal their money! Ah! I'm using that to convince them that my dance was good enough to give money for. Or my music was good enough. That our Dulahan's dance was good enough for money. And she she should have tripped and kicked her head. Let's be real. Honestly, I was thinking that if she dropped her head, I was really wanting Sazerac to just like uh kind of foot it like a football just back up. <laughs> Nah, if I got like a nat one, she was gonna have her head fall off and she was kicking that bitch across the entire thing. What's weird is launching it into the crowd might have actually helped. <laughs> <laughs> just having her body, like, like her body's like just kind of like on the ground because she technically just kicked herself in the head. Yeah. But then like after a moment of like recovering, she's like running into the crowd to find her head. Like, the weird thing is I swear that there was an entire town with us that was playing music as we were going through the leads. <laughs> it's like, why did none of them, like, when I was looking for people to play music, why were none of them there? <laughs> why were we only looking at the caravan? <laughs> uh, I don't remember. <laughs> like, that's the part that threw It's like, there were other music players earlier. Eh. <laughs> I'm oh, not well. the music one, so it's not my problem. Maybe we have... Ruru stole all their instruments. <laughs> I'm just happy to know that apparently it is only my viol. Uh, yeah, only my viol that fucks me over. If I just start with the lute, it rolls well. Yeah. Somehow. I don't know why. I like I was like, I haven't ever got to play with master singers and, you know, play musicians before and you're just like, nope. 
I'm literally just a prostitute. <laughs> I'm just a musical doot doot prostitute, buddy. Uh, Freddie Mercury reference. <sighs> All right, let's see. Uh, we all take some time off after this to cool down during this time. Uh, during this time, he blames all of us for the campaign failing. And when we say, but this is the problems we have, he threw a tantrum and said we were attacking him. You don't let that dude play with you. Yeah. I start my campaign with Ruby, Sam, and Matt. It goes amazingly. They start a goblin pro wrestling federation. What? That sounds amazing. Gary and Ron say they will join at a later date. Eventually, their turn to come and arrives. It's been a month since they said they would join, and on the day, I still knew nothing about their characters, so I arrive early to talk to them. Oh Gary's boy. really trying, but Ron keeps talking over him and drinking wine. Oh, God. He has also taken starting equipment and gold, but I said you only get one, and then the gold from your background. Yeah. By the time the others arrive, he has had at least six glasses of wine. Oh, no. The session starts, and instantly he refuses to let Gary talk and won't uh, talk to the other players. All he wants to do is go to a library, but there isn't one in town, so he says he, uh, uh, so he says they leave town. I would have said, all right, your character leaves town. The rest of y'all can stay if y'all want. Yeah. I throw a combat encounter at them before the split to try to get them to stay together. I one-shot Ron because of an unlucky crit. They were level two, Oops. but they won the encounter and try get and tried to get supplies for a mission. All of them accepted. Everyone is shopping happily except Ron. I ask him what he is buying. He responds saying he has no money. Also, I do want to admit something from the last monster a uh, monster hunter thing. Huh? I did end up fudging the rolls because otherwise you would have gotten hit, but with a second crit. All right. And I didn't want to just kill you. <laughs> I mean, I was kind of waiting for the heart attack, so. <laughs> yeah, that was a weird thing. Yeah, it felt like you were in kind of a weird mood today. Yeah, it's been starting classes. So I'm just, you know, doing a lot more now. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. You don't have class tomorrow. Nope. Because Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Yeah. Woot. Hooray for Martin Luther. Hooray for civil rights. Yeah. Hooray for an end to segregation, because that was really stupid. Yeah. Now, I will accept I was wrong to get angry, but he but had said he gets background gold three times, and he refused to take it. No, I think getting a little angry would have been understandable. Yeah. It gets I worse, though. I said, okay, you have no money, but can still trade. He looked at me and said, I have no equipment. You said I can't have any. Ron. Boy. Ron. At this point, he had already polished off two bottles of wine without us noticing. I'm now fuming, but the session ended there, and then due to family injury, and and then due to but the session ended there, and then due to a family injury for Sam. Oh. By the time I got home, we as a party decided to kick Ron for being drunk and being such a problem. Before I could even tell him, he quit telling me how shitty a person I was because I didn't drive out to personally sit and make the character with him. Okay. Dudes! Get- Why are you both under my desk? Ah, <laughs> uh, shit, are room. the demons under your desk again? There's not enough room for both of you. Give me that look. I see, they're vying for your attention now. Yeah, they both rushed under the desk. One of them's I... no longer under the desk. Uh, let's wrap let's... this up then, quickly. Yeah, <laughs> you got uh... Some attention. Well, I was thinking we could probably do the next part, but uh, the uh, because part. I didn't. What? Yeah, yeah, the next part. It's not There's only three this... parts. It's not directly this story, but he has more stories. Anyway, and immediately incorporate his backstory into the, uh, make the character with him, and immediately incorporate his backstory into the game. He was a That's lost. Not... 
Yeah. He was a lost prince from a completely separate continent, and the session he was in lasted a quarter of the normal length. You, it's kind of hard to implement someone's backstory in the first session. Yeah. Chill. Chill out. Okay. Anyway, we now continue the campaign without Gary and Ron, and my players are genuinely enjoying it, and any criticism given is instantly addressed and resolved maturely. TLDR, immature person ruins multiple campaigns because things aren't going perfectly the way he wants them. Change the letters to names because, you know, it's annoying. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. I think we could probably fit that guy gets me kicked out of the game. Maybe I'm the that guy. Oh, is that just a one part thing? Yeah, that's just a one part. All right. Long story, but simple enough. Our cast is myself, the Dragonborn Paladin. Druid, Ranger, DM, Warlock, and the Warlock is that guy. There were other players, but they have no major impact. Sadly, DM's story doesn't feature as, uh, much as it is washed over by that guy. Oh, no. This game was D&D 5e and was text-based starting at level 1. Oh. As the DM likes roleplay, he basically left sessions open permanently for us to roleplay. That's interesting. I mean, the text-based thing has me a bit worried, but that's more just because text-based can go wrong really quick. It's just text-based roleplay, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah. But depending on the number of people, you can end up having people jump the gun. Or you're too slow to type. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Xanthars had just come out, and I made a paladin going to the Oath of Conquest. This basic story that was rolled the D with DM using Xanathars and was fully approved was he felt he had a divine right to become ru the ruler of a kingdom as the chosen paladin of the Raven Queen. Oh boy. Mind you, he may not actually be or ever become ruler or the chosen of the Raven Queen. That was just his motivation to start. Game start, and my character meets Warlock and Ranger on the way to our destination of characters, a huge metropolitan hub. Warlock insists my character calls him a bandit. Insults. Insist, insults him and calls him a bandit. I've, and and insists I find a different road to take. My character refused, so Warlock attempted to make me flee with his class feature. I saved my character's pissed, so walks away from them. Warlock sounds like a dick. <laughs> yeah. At least Ruru waited until she had a reason to get mad at Kresnik. She was just she was just lightly salted before, but now she's kind of, you know. Your characters end up pissed at a lot of people. She <laughs> Yeah. I'm just thinking about Taika. Yeah. <laughs> That's do you know what the problem is? What? Well, I secretly love role-playing really bratty snooty people that are just assholes to everyone. You do. Granted, so, yeah. yeah. So it's it comes out in different forms here. Yeah. Because normally whole... I role play the snooty noble. Yeah. Whereas, like in my case, I either role play really chilled, relaxed characters, really anxious people, or punch happy lunatics. <laughs> <laughs> so you either have chill or no chill. Meanwhile, I'm yes. at like semi chill at all times. This is like. I think Sazerac started relaxed, but then the party caused him to go full anxiety. <laughs> yep. It's like, all right, everything's okay. Why are you people like this? <laughs> it's like, everything was going well. He was kind of having some issues due to just, like, the shit going on around him. And then the, mo and then the underground passages happened. <laughs> yep. He was like, it's a good thing I'm going back home. <laughs> Just, I just want to go home. Uh, yeah, and then like some of the other characters I have lined up are like that Goliath Ranger, who one of her traits is the fact that she is just like someone who absolutely loves like finding death traps and stuff like that. I'm gonna step in the death trap. And so <laughs> it's a whole thing of like she's basically an adrenaline junkie. Oh gosh. A very strong adrenaline junkie. <laughs> Please, no. <laughs> it's a good thing that rangers have D10 hit uh, hit die. 
Ah, are they kind of tanky? Uh, they can be. That's the whole thing. Oh, Rangers God. have powerful hit have powerful hit die, and the original thing with them in five e, like the uh, the normal stuff for them five e has the potential to be really powerful, but it's very situational. Situational power, yeah. Yeah. Whereas the uh, the class variations in that one earth arc one on earth arc kind of thing makes them less situational, and so the powerful things end up being potentially broken. <laughs> ah. Like the Hunter's Mark thing, of being able to do that a number of times equal to your Wisdom modifier without concentration. Oh, no. On a spell that deals extra damage to whoever you mark with Hunter's Mark. <laughs> and I believe also gives you advantage on attacks against them. For only you? Yeah. Ah, shit. And I have her set up to where she dual wields hand axes. And is strength based. So each of those weapons go from 1d6 to 2d6 when that ability is active. Wait, you're a ranger. Why are you using axes? <laughs> because she's a strong ranger. <laughs> if, if you say she so. She has a bow and arrow. Right. <laughs> she's just not using them. Is it my line? Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, be your. Uh, no, wait, no, you just did your line. Okay, we land. Uh, we land up meeting the rest of the party at a campsite. Uh -huh. I'm wondering if it is a thing where this guy's first language isn't English or not, or if that's just a regional thing. Maybe. Or maybe he just doesn't know that the phrases end up typically. I don't know. He, he did say he was doing stuff on mobile, so... Yeah. Uh, at a campsite, and Warlock is now threatening anyone and everyone that he will kill them if they go near Ranger. That's weird. My character wants him to stop, because any of these people may have to help him later in life and will not want to. <laughs> at that point, my character becomes his target. He asks who my deity is and what was their dogma. So... It so explained everything, and my last point was that my god does not like those who falsely extend their life beyond natural means. His response, well, your god must be really shit and useless because I have altered my life and lived far beyond my expected years. The fuck? <laughs> not standing for this, but want to, uh, uh, not standing for this, but not wanting to be too aggressive, my character shrugs, shrugs and says, maybe that's why we met, so I can smite you. That guy then throws a tantrum, throws a tantrum me about threatening him, but the party all agree that my character was well in his right to do so. Yeah, his character's been threatening everyone. What the actual fuck? <laughs> hey, what is with this warlock? Aggressive, angry boy. Yeah. Back in game, his character states he could easily take my character out, knowing basic mechanics and my character being quite prideful, uh, shru uh, shrugs and simply says, Show me. One Eldritch Blast from the Warlock takes me just under half health. I had 13 HP at level 1. <laughs> <laughs> Hit him with a dab. Show that Warlock who's boss. <laughs> yeah, Paladins are kind of built to tank. Mm -hmm. He gets pissed and starts going off at everyone else. I decide the shit needs to stop, so I say, okay, then who do you draw your power from? Oh, I serve, insert edgy patron name. She is immensely powerful fey and huntress. All right, so when is she at the strongest and... All right, so when she is at the strongest and thus you are at your strongest, Warlock thinks for a bit and says, the full moon. My character stands and holds out his hand. Very well. We shall settle our difference at the next full moon. But until then, you work with us. Huh. Again, the like, I get that he's saying I may be that guy, but the paladin seems a lot more reasonable right now. Yeah. He's like, fine, you want to start shit? I'll end shit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait, no, it's still my line. Whoops. <laughs> yeah. He agrees on one condition. 
Uh, all on condition. It's to the death. Very well. But if you start shit with anyone else, I will smite you where you stand. He agrees. And out of character, the other players were thanking me for standing up for them as they are all new players and didn't know what to do. Yeah. Due to this and how that guy was treating everyone, my character was slowly pushed as the leader of the party. <laughs> yeah. My character accepted and became very protective and was working with Ranger a lot, a mysterious elven ranger who had an OCD-like compulsion to gather stories from how we, uh, from all we met. All I'm thinking of if Rue was in this, she would have tried to shoot that dude in the back of the head when they were having their duel. The warlock? Yes. All I'm thinking about is the fact that, like, with that other one, Renatka just buffing the person who's less of an asshole. <laughs> Here, have a buff. Good luck! <laughs> Perfect chance to test something out. Here. I also realized that if I do do the whole thing of playing a clone of her in, like, a campaign, I want to have it to where she still has the Simic background trait just because it's a completely useless feature. <laughs> Nice. It's like, well, I know where to fight things out Ravnica, but not here. <laughs> <laughs> I know nothing about this place. I was dropped off a few weeks ago. Or I was cloned a few weeks ago. And just let loose. <laughs> <laughs> not long after we meet Druid at the site of dragon attack, of a dragon attack, and try to heal as many people as possible, kill you, everyone. Is that yeah. actually yeah, Q, everyone banishing the injured or splints being set, or simply me using lay on hands to speed up certain healing process, but all overall Ranger and I, the only experienced player player other than that guy, let Druid shine with his awesome medicine checks and we finish off our section feeding feeling quite happy and the group forming good bonds, except Warlock. Instead of helping anyone, he immediately marches off to meet their leader of the fort and stare start to blame them for the attack. Jesus fucking Christ. So I'm trying to remember, because I think Renetka actually does have proficiency in medicine. <laughs> cool. Yeah, she's technically a doctor. Ah, uh, Dr. Renekta's in session. I promise not to experiment on you. Dr. Valenko, Maybe. you might wake up with, you might wake up with gills. What? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> like, she was also that person you guys met in that tavern. Yeah. So, if you guys end up befriending that character, there's some, going to be some interesting things happening. <laughs> I'm gonna steal all of her gold, so that when I open it, it's just, you know, poison, <laughs> and suddenly I have an extra arm. Why is this full of fish? <laughs> <laughs> is fish a currency? Can I sell- <laughs> Where it becomes a fisher to suck to make money? <laughs> it's just like a bunch of vials of fish parts. <laughs> Why is there a bottle of fish eyeballs? <laughs> Just in the background, a shadow slowly looming over the thief. <laughs> ah, I see a willing participant. <laughs> you found my ex you found my supplies. <laughs> oh God. Uh let's see. Things become heated, so we try. Uh, so we try go resolve things. That guy points out uh, points at my character and says, "He's of dragon blood. You cannot trust him." Ignoring that guy, Ranger and I talk us out of being arrested for what Warlock has said. We get a job to simply find the dragon's hiding place in, in a nearby... Uh, and in a nearby... I'm guessing that's supposed to be swamp. Yeah. And then return. We accept, but that guy wanted triple the money and multiple magic items. Only for him, mind you. <sighs> this dude finds a lot of greedy people. Yeah. We start tracking with the assistance of the local scout, but my character is becoming more suspicious of that guy. While the group sleeps one night, I use Detect Evil and find out that there's evil nearby, but I have no idea from where. So over the next few days, my character slowly eliminates people from being suspects through sub subsequent uses. By this point, we we're nearing level 3. I'm just picturing it like hovering over Ruru and it's saying maybe. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, this girl's probably evil. <laughs> Is this weird mad scientist lady evil? You know, we're not sure. 
<laughs> we aren't actually sure what mo uh, morality scale she's working on. But she's certainly not a goody two shoes. <laughs> but she's not, you know. Those might be very unethical experiments. Yeah. It's been a sudden disappearance of homeless people recently. Although they've reappeared with extra limbs, so. <laughs> With those extra limbs, they've been able to do enough work to where they can now afford houses. <laughs> so it worked out this time, at least, but, you know. Just like, a couple of them said they never consented to it. <laughs> they didn't consent, but now they have jobs. <laughs> so they're not complaining, but a few of them are a bit, you know, shaken up still about, you know, having extra limbs. Oh god, I'm just imagining that it's not even fully that. It's that she, like, kidnapped them off the street, but is also now paying them. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is morally dubious. This is questionable at best. <laughs> We're not sure what's going on. <laughs> oh god. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, we find a dragon egg that hatches and attaches itself to Druid, but that guy insists we raise it as a weapon. Okay. Rude! Druid and I uh, do a private RP with supervision of DM, where she asked me to help raise the dragon, as she was of elf descent and I was a dragon, not to mention she was worried Warlock might steal, uh, Warlock wanted to steal the dragon. Understandable. Yeah, when we come back from roleplay, we'll find out that that guy has been accosting the others and telling them how I'm going to betray them all and was trying to control us. The group informs me of this and he attempts to grab the dragon. At this point, everyone draws weapons and threatens him. We vote and he is exiled. He may accompany us, us from 30 feet back. If he came close, <laughs> the party would strike him down. <laughs> we ruin a party of lar if in a large group, of, like in a larger group of people. <laughs> <laughs> Ruru with a lot less self-control than a large group of people. But as we've seen, Ruru's self-control isn't the best either. That's true. <laughs> but that's because I'm I'm leaving it up to a wisdom roll, and my rolls yeah. are horrible whenever whenever wisdom is, is involved. Again, it's a good thing the team mom at least isn't overly annoyed by you at this point. Because <laughs> she mostly listens to you. <laughs> Except Why for that do I one keep time. in your character's moral centers? Um, what other characters do we have that are like that? Uh, it was the uh, Cryella and uh, Butter Fairy oh, thing. Right. Oh, yeah, the Butter Fairy thing. Yeah. I don't know, because <laughs> you're just about as experienced as me in this, so you're the perfect person to, like, if we do get into trouble and see what happens, it's both going to be new for us, I guess, you know? Yeah. It's a real shame my character died like that. <laughs> let's throw Let's see what happens if we burn it. <laughs> Everything's gone bad. Yay! The fact that he had it specifically to where if it gets set on fire, that happens. I think he made that because of my character, let's be real. Yes, but there's always the chance he didn't. <laughs> Or the chance is just like, this won't come into effect. They're not that dumb. I you underestimate my power. <laughs> I found what was left of our guide. I stopped caring. <laughs> <laughs> I begin searching the puddle for anything of our guide. You find a tooth. I found our guide. <laughs> uh. Just holding up the tooth. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Uh, when we come back from RFP, we find out that guy has been accosting up. A... Wait, I think uh... I just said that one, yeah. Are you sure? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That guy messages me and tells me I'm ruining the game and turning everyone against him in secret, and he didn't like it. You're turning everyone against yourself. The final portion comes, and we are standing outside a ruined church. I had used my skills to determine it was either the guide or that guy that was evil. I was sensing, sense, sensing, I was sensing, right? Yeah. And yeah, I messaged sense. the DM. This was his first game ever. 
hey, look, I'm going to metagame a bit and attack the guide. I'm going to assume the evil is her, even though my character more suspects that guy. I don't want to do unnecessary, unnecessary PvP, so I'm going to metagame. Are you cool with that? Yeah, that doesn't seem like a bad idea. Yeah. He responds, yes, that would make things easier later on, so he doesn't mind. <laughs> so my character calls a meeting and then attacks our guard, crits, and kills them in one hit. <laughs> <laughs> Die! What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> now the party is in chaos asking why. <laughs> <laughs> Nani! Nani, Nani the fuck! <laughs> Sing me now, Nani the fuck! Before I can explain, that guy starts screaming and shouting, so I walk away, stating, I will explain to those that want to listen. Individually, the characters come over and chat to me, and I explain, and they all accepted my character's reasoning and actually reassure me I did the right thing. They will handle that guy. Finally, my character walks back, and that guy approaches him screaming about the evil and not telling the party, so I ask him how he knew. Instead of saying something plausible, like someone told me, he says, I overheard you. At least make a ch perception check to eavesdrop. And a stealth check. Well, like, I know that you're not supposed to, like, make checks without saying, like, what, it, uh, what you're checking. Yeah. But I do, and so maybe the fact that in Roll20, I will make perception checks without stating what I'm doing is probably a bad thing, but I always do it whenever someone does something. Yeah, and then you just wait for the DM and everyone else to be like, all right, what was that for? Yeah, and it's always, it's only the perception checks. Yeah. Only those. And at least in Roll20, it tells you what the check was. Yeah. That's the only time I do that. And I always make sure that, like, my character's doing this. Okay, I'm pretty sure I'm relatively nearby. Perception check. Because I want to make the check, but I don't want to interrupt the flow of what's going on. And again, that's only in Roll20. If it were IRL, I would wait and then go, okay, I'm going to do a perception check. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. Because at least roll 20 tells you what was used. <laughs> mm -hmm. Is it it's not... Uh, wait, uh, no. Oh. Uh, now the group chat explodes with everyone saying he's metagaming because my character was a good distance away and that guy ne had never tried to listen in. Again, perception check. Yeah. So he retains his message saying his character runs up with a dagger in hand looking threatening. My character and I had had an my character and I had had enough, so I attacked and hit him easily, but said I would do minimum damage, so it was like a warning shot, hoping that would dissuade more violence. Makes sense. Again, I'm just imagining Renetka because of the fact that I gave her shocking grasp. <laughs> it was just like someone picks a fight with her, just... Zap! <laughs> it's taste time! Or even just the whole thing of, like, a back off. I would ask the DM if I could do this, of basic shocking grasp of a cantrip doesn't use a uh, spell slot, of having electricity arc between her fingers, of like a whole thing of, hey, I'm not in the mood, don't start this. Using that for like an intimidation thing. Yeah. And if the DM allowed it... Maybe having that cause it to be advantage, but otherwise just a base uh, intimidation check using the electricity to do the intimidation. Yeah. Uh, then again, a lot of her cantrips are kind of fluffed. If ah. she gets high enough level, she's going to end up with sword burst. And I'm basically going to have that fluffed as literally she pulls a puffer fish. <laughs> Not like full, like the whole like blowing up, but more just bunch of spikes bursting out of her body. Cool. Just a very rapid, like, spikes grow out of her body and then retract. Like, most of her spells are biological in nature. Alright. Or buffs. 
which would be fluff to state that what they're doing to the person has a biological hallmark to it. Like stone skin would cause the person to like grow hard scales. Disgusting. Yeah. Oh yeah, it makes sense with the character. Yeah. Uh, let's. Oh yeah. Uh, he throws a tantrum, saying there was no initiative. Roll. Okay, fair enough. So we roll, and he goes first. He casts sleep on me, and I point out it won't affect me as the entire party was around, and I had the most HP out of everyone. Yeah. <laughs> he threw a tantrum, quoting rules, but everyone calls bullshit, ignoring everyone, and not even waiting for DM. He sends a message about how my character goes down. He strips them to nothing I'm and blinds them tightly with a rope before walking. Wait, wait, wait! Before waking them up with a knife to their throat, basically saying, "Beg me not to kill you." Again, I'm pretty sure the other characters would stop. Would stop him. The DM would be like, "Yeah, yeet, delete that shit." <laughs> Firstly, my character wasn't going to going to beg. Secondly, my uh, DM says that sleep only knocks out some other party members, so my character does not go down, and I get my turn. Wait, I will say that the whole thing with sleep is that it affects people of your choosing, so he could have focused it exclusively on the paladin. Yeah. But at the same time, if that happened, I'm pretty sure the other characters would step in. Yeah. <laughs> and be like, no. Like, just imagine the entire party just yeeting on this dude. I'm imagining the entire party's around the paladin. So, like, mm -hmm. the paladin collapses and everyone else is just standing around him like, what the fuck, dude? Just vibe... <laughs> vibe check. Vibe check. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, okay. So my character does not go down and I get my turn. Now I'm pissed, so I say, okay, I use divide smite and attack with my great axe. I crit. <laughs> Yeet! Vibe check. <laughs> Of the gods. <laughs> Vibe check of the gods. Nice. I crit. Uh, yeah, I crit. I roll damage, and it's nearly 40 damage, so insta-death for that guy. He throws a tantrum saying, but I said my character would only ever attack for minimum damage. I roll my... He said that he was rolling for minimum damage in the whole thing of warning shot. That, which, yeah. again, could happen without initiative being rolled. Yeah. Just like that fish attacking Burndo. <laughs> yeah, bully. He nibbled my toes off. He said, your toes, I want them. Your toes. Hand them. <laughs> Again, it's going to be really unfortunate that that character dies and all of a sudden we have to deal with the abusive handler you made. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck oh it. my gosh. I'll do it myself. It'll just be Taika all over again, just super fucking aggressive cursing constantly. I mean, so long as she doesn't just start outright abusing the rest of the part. <laughs> I go to smack I go to smack Bjorn. No, 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 no. If, if she's she, she's gonna slap anyone, it's gonna be, you know. Ricky? <laughs> Ricky, our fighter. <laughs> the one character who actually stops him from running ahead. <laughs> Yep. Everyone else is like, if he dies, he dies. Your character, no! If you want to die so bad, I'll throw down right here and now. <laughs> like, literally, like, I've had it to where Reginald has stated multiple times, I'm not going to save you. <laughs> <laughs> if you go and get yourself killed, that is your fault. <laughs> Dude's like, I'll support you, but I'm not running there after you. It's like literally the times when he stepped in to help, it's because everyone else stepped in to help. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but one of these times we're just going to be like, huh. Like, my character is super mad at him right now for not helping them with the smaller stuff. Yeah. And Reginald's also kind of bugged about the fact that he started the fight with the Nurse Isla. Mm -hmm. And the Kulu Yaku. <laughs> yeah. Because the whole thing is the reason why I haven't been having it to where Reginald gets the party out of situations is I don't want the NPC to be the one that has to save everyone. Yeah. Because that feels cheap. Yeah. Is that kind of dumb? Probably. No. But, yeah. I, it's, live, it's... On, I live on a you-live-you-learn situation. If he's going to run out and get his, char his yeah. character killed because that's what his character would do, 
then let him fucking die. <laughs> if it, and if Reginald has to save someone, it's going to be a character that he likes right now. Like Bjorn. Oh my gosh, Bjorn, I, I'm going to be sad if Bjorn dies. Bjorn has endeared himself very much to Reginald because he's just that stupid. <laughs> mm-hmm. He's stupid, but he has an encyclopedic knowledge of the monsters we run into, usually. <laughs> yep. Dude's just been there this entire time. It's really funny, because he doesn't do anything, really. <laughs> he's literally yeah. just backup support, and he's just like, you got it. Good luck. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like, he's also the tank, technically? Because <laughs> he has the most health because of, this, because of his CR. <laughs> yeah. Alright, though, let's continue reading that. Yeah, We're yeah. Uh... Let's see. Uh, I, I roll my eyes. Fine, whatever, go ahead. He attacks again and misses. Then rage... I'm guessing Guts is supposed to be quits. Spell check, yeah. probably? Yeah. Uh, the, game, uh, the game group sending out a message, a character message, and basically said, Paladin has to go. His character has no links, but I'm tied to Ranger and Druid. I asked the DM about this, and he said, It's true, their backstory swore intertwined. I asked if he had a way to fix this, and he said, Sadly, no. Either I have to go, or half the party leaves. I mean, or the druid and ranger could say, hey, You've been kind of a dick. I think I'm going to stop being friends with you. <laughs> you used to be cool, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is the problem with doing, like, the connected backstories, is they only work... If one of the people involved isn't a fucking dick. Yeah. Oh, God. Uh, oh, yeah, my, uh, my line. Instead of, as of him asking me to go, because I, I could see he was so hurt, I offered to switch character. He agrees. The party agrees. That guy refuses to be involved in any game with me as, as such. Uh, with me. As such, I bowed out. Oh, God. Seriously, dude. Zane? Uh, yeah. This was not a nice experience, but it got, got worse. I found out this guy was really involved in the community of RPG gamers around me and basically dragged my name through the mud saying I can only play evil characters and, and was a murder hobo. You were the one threatening everyone, wanted to steal a dragon and kept picking fights with a dude who had just showed up. Yeah. The actual fuck. Yeah. Needless to say, it took two years to find another game, and since then, I have never had more games, uh, I never had more games I have been involved in. Wondering why the sudden change, I found out his character, uh, after that, Landed up killing three player characters he didn't like and killed multiple NPCs when they refused to be his slave. He is now persona non grata in, mo in almost all games. Almost. And persona non. Persona is a foreign person who's entering or remaining in a person. Right. I'm trying to figure out what the hell that means. Persona non grata meaning. Uh, unacceptable or unwelcome person. Ah, uh, so he got kicked out. Yes. And isn't allowed in. Yeah. That's what PNG means. Oh, yeah. TLDR, that guy insults and threatens everyone, throws a tantrum when he said... When, when, when said same is done to him and finally holds game hostage when he realizes he can't kill players he doesn't like. Jesus fucking Christ. Ugh, and that's where we're going to leave this. Uh, we'll probably do the Ricky stories that this guy wrote at a later date, but... Mm, Ricky Wiki, a woo? Uh, yep. Uh, Don't say you're Rick, a woo, what's this? Oh, right, uh, special... A special thank you to Destiny Baird. If you would like to get a shout out, either audibly or visually, feel free to donate to our Patreon. Link in the description.